Welcome to Electron Online. Now we're ready to do part two of round three. And primarily we're going to calculate the new state matrix and then we're going to calculate the new or current process covariance matrix to set us up for round four. We're not going to do round four. I think three rounds is enough to see how the process works. But at least you still need to do this in each round. First, we need to bring in the measurements, the measured values for round three, position 4860, velocity 286. Let's put that down here. 4860 and 286. We do not have to convert. That is already in the correct format. Normally we convert it. Don't need to do that here. We're now ready to calculate the current state matrix. This is equal to the predicted state matrix and we have that right there. Predicted state matrix is 4839, 4839.1 and 286.3 plus the Kalman gain. The Kalman gain is 0 0.231, 0, 0, 0, 0.226, multiplied times the Y matrix, that's the measured value matrix, 4860, 286. Subtract from that the H matrix, in this case is going to be the identity matrix, multiplied times the predicted state matrix, which is 4839.1 and 286.3. Basically, we have to subtract this from that and then multiply the times the common gain. The common gain basically puts a weight on whether or not we want to put more, more value in the predicted value or more weight in the measured value. 4839.1286.3 plus the Kalman gain 0 0.231 0, 0, 0, 0.226 multiply times this minus this now this is bigger so this becomes uh, 20.9 and 286 minus 286.3 this is bigger so it's a minus 0 0.3 this is equal to 4839.1, 286.3. These are the predicted values. We're going to adjust those with the Kalman gain. So now we have to multiply this. This times this. So we get uh, 0 0.231 times 20.9. We have an adjustment of 4.8 to one decimal place. 4.8 and... 0.226 times 0.3, that's negative. Uh, round that off to a minus 0 0.1 to the nearest one decimal place. Simply add those together and we get 4843.9, I believe. And subtract one from that 286.2. And this is really the key to the whole process. This gives us the adjusted position of the plane and the adjusted velocity of the plane based upon predicted values, based on observed values, and then using the Kelman gain to put a proper weight between those two. Then also we need to, of course, come up with the new process covariance matrix that would be used in round four. Let's go ahead and do that as well. This is equal to, we have the identity matrix, one, one, zero, zero, minus the Kelman gain. The Kelman gain is right here. 0 0.2310, 0, 0, and 0 0.226. Multiply times h, in this case h is simply going to be the an identity matrix as well, so nothing changes, this is just to change the format. And then we have to multiply it times the predicted process covariance matrix, 187.5001. Ten point five. Notice will be this minus this multiplied times that. So this is equal to um, one minus that. That would be let's see here, zero point seven six nine zero zero and zero point seven seven four. I believe that's correct. Twenty. Yep, that's correct. I multiply that times 187.5, 0, 0, and 10.5. Let's see what that ends up being. 
that's 0 0.769 times 187.5. That gives us 144.2. 144 144.200. 0 0.774 times 10.5. It gives us 8.1. And this is the new process covariance matrix to be used in the next round, round four. We don't need that here. This is the key. After three rounds, we've established using the Kalman gain that our position is 48, 43.9, velocity is 286.2. The measured values for round three was 4860 and 286. So we're not very far off in the measured values, but it should give us slightly better values than the measured values because there was a lot of error, assumed error in the observations. So we're going to trust these numbers more than we're going to trust our observations. And that's how we went through the three rounds of Kalman filter on a two-dimensional example with position and velocity. In a realistic scenario, we're actually tracking an airplane, for example, that is moving in a, just a one dimension in the X dimension with a velocity in the X direction. Of course, in the real world, planes move in the X, Y, and Z direction. We need to keep track of all that, plus all kinds of other things we need to keep track of and we'll show you some examples in the future, but this is a really good start on how to use Kalman filter to keep track of an airplane as we're, for example, tracking it with a radar. That's how that works.